coming up. The shorthorns have been a good fit here because they've been that all-purpose breed that can do so many things really well. I do believe the shorthorn breed has something to offer everyone. Shorthorn cattle, America's first cattle breed, next on The American Rancher. Welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Shorthorns are America's first beef breed. And since the 1800s, shorthorns have been the livelihood of ranches across the nation. This is due to their exceptional performance, maternal efficiency, and family focus. Today, the breed is the ultimate outcross for British-based cowherds. Shorthorns have benefited Marty and Scott Loving of Kansas since the 1950s and improve the herds of countless customers. Here at Loving Farms, we have about 260 mother cows, all registered from 100% purebred shorthorns down to half-blood cows that we've uh, used in our composite program. Dad started the herd in 1948, really got going in the 1950s, and we've just tried to carry that on, uh, tried to keep producing the kind of cattle that work in the commercial industry. We collect over 20 data points on every animal that's here, and it's something that as we analyze and critique our cattle, it makes them better, it makes us look ahead and improve what we're breeding. So uh, the shorthorns have been a good fit here because they've been that all-purpose breed that can do so many things really well. We're really focused on making these cattle as predictable as possible removing all the genetic risk from these cattle that we can. And so as we start to look at things that make cattle work better on these range conditions, uh, work better in the feedlot, we collect data from those points and then tie that back to what we're actually seeing out here as we start to stack generations of, of those traits that we find to be you know, useful in this situation. And you know, feed efficiency is the one trait that's probably more valuable in terms of you know, returning dollars or saving dollars to not only our operation, but our customer's operation. As I see the shorthorn breed, they're an all-purpose, all-round breed that can provide extra milk in the cows. They can provide a good cuttable carcass, high-yielding carcass, and they can do it most efficiently on the least amount of grain. And so our shorthorns, uh, we're proving that they have the ability to do all of those things. And we have so much to offer as far as hybrid vigor. They can give you the most heterosis of any breed. We feel like they've got a lot of potential. And as cattlemen across the country look for something different to, to you know, help with maternal efficiency, to help with performance and carcass quality, that the shorthorn is gonna be a natural fit. American Shorthorn Association has been very aggressive in the last six or eight years as far as getting us into the IGS system, getting us into digital beef, and then getting us into the genomics with genetic evaluations. So we feel like we've got the tools, we just need to use them as a breed now to, to bring that kind of cattle to the commercial man. I would say 60 to 70% of our customers are wanting Shorthorn Plus genetics. It's a gateway for people that haven't used Shorthorns before. As they trend away from being so focused on one breed, it's interesting to me that when a customer comes and buys a black or a solid red Shorthorn Plus, a lot of times their next purchase is a purebred Shorthorn. They, they see the value in the heterosis, and over those years, we've enhanced that generation after generation. And so, you know, as a calving ease, breed, I, that's where the shorthorns of today are. One thing that we do at Loving Farms that's somewhat unique, at least in the shorthorn breed is unique, is we've started purchasing back feeder calves that are out of the genetics bought from Loving Farms. We think that's a way to feed our data analysis. Um, it's a way to get more data points back into the shorthorn EPD system helps us drive and make better decisions based on that data. And so it's a nice way for our customers to get them back to where they can get some data back on them, get some feedback on their calves. It also gives them another marketing outlet that helps them financially, maybe not go through some of the traditional avenues of cattle marketing. And so it's just a nice feature that we do that helps us from a data standpoint, and it also helps our customers from a marketing standpoint. The data that we collect now will be valuable in the future as we connect the dots with the data and the genetics. 
We feel like our cattle have so much value, it's just a matter of us defining and collecting and putting that data into the system. If we can keep our cattle headed in the direction of the industry, we'll be successful. Shorthorns, the all-purpose breed with proven genetics time and again. We now go to Ohio, where Lee Miller, alongside colleague and veterinarian Dr. Jeff Byers, hosts a nationally recognized bull and maternal event sale every spring and autumn. Working together and using gentle but high-quality shorthorns, they've garnered repeat and loyal customers from across the country. We really liked the British cattle and, and the shorthorns were docile, they are easy to work with. They cross really well back on the commercial cow herd that exists today. There's a lot of British-based cows and a lot of people are looking for an outcross, a uh, British outcross to use on those cows. And shorthorns really complement that. We started in the business back in the, say the mid 50s when my, about the time I was born and my dad started a small herd. Uh, my brother and I were interested in the cattle business so we just kept it growing over the years and uh, became a kind of a major occupation for the both of us. It's his full-time job and I'm a veterinarian so I work at it as much as I can and when I can. At our farm it's always been shorthorns. My dad liked them because they were more problem-free in his eyes than some of the other breeds and the docility, raising a family, so that's how we got started in it. I think what makes Byland and us such a good fit is the fact that we both focus on trying to continuously improve uh, the genetics in our cow herds. Uh, we're always looking for cattle to perform in the pasture as well as in the feedlot. Our goal is to raise cattle that are uh, competitive in the commercial setting, uh, carcass quality, mothering ability, calf ability, gain ability, easy fleshing. We do collect data. Uh, for the evaluation of the animals. It's important to us to know that those cattle are gonna perform for our customers when they get out and we sell those bulls and they cover their cows that those calves are gonna grow. You're trying to make a better animal in whatever way. You know, you look at your own herd and you think, well, we need to add this trait or we need to fix that trait or something. You know, you select another bull based on what does my cow herd need so that we can make a better animal. The selection traits that we choose at Paint Valley Farms um, are quite simple. Uh, we try to take the problems out of the cattle. So we choose for calving ease, we choose for maternal. We're looking for cows with some longevity, right? So there needs to be good udders. They need to be reproductively sound. The thing that makes me proud is that we have a lot of repeat buyers over the years that keep coming back to us. Sometimes in a new generation, a younger generation will come back and they'll comment how they used to come with their dad or grandpa to our sales years ago. And I think that's, that's just a real great feeling. At Pay Valley Farms, we have uh, 150 shorthorn cows. Uh, we have uh, two sales each year. The females are sold through the uh, maternal event sale in December of each year. And the bulls are sold through the bull sale in April of each year. Well, we market our cattle through the sale jointly with Paint Valley Farm, and then we have other bulls that we sell throughout the year, a few extra bulls as well. But last year, actually, most of them sold in the sale. I do believe the Shorehorn breed has something to offer everyone. We've sold bulls from as far west as California and as far east as Maine. When you buy a bull from Paint Valley or Byland at the bull sale, what you're getting um, is a first-year breeding guarantee, and if you have a problem with the bull, replace your bull for you to use. And we'll also offer free delivery anywhere in the U.S. Customer service is the, really the most important part of everything. I mean, I'm a veterinarian, so I'm dealing with clients every day. And I know how important that is to my business. The cattle business is the same way. We have to treat people with dignity and respect and have total integrity in our operation, or we aren't going to be there in the long term. And we want to be there in the long term. After the break. You know, if I could tell folks one thing about shorthorn cattle, I'd really want them to understand or know how valuable they are in the entire beef industry. The maternal ability of the cattle is the driving point. They're docile, they're easy to work with, but there's a lot of attributes that made me stick with the shorthorns. 
We visit Wakaroo Farms next on The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. For over 100 years, the Jordan family of Wakaroo Farms has trusted in the Shorthorn breed. Early on, the family determined that Shorthorns have distinct advantages. They're easier to manage, they're more adaptable to various feed resources, they last longer, and they produce a higher quality beef product. You know, if I could tell folks one thing about, about Shorthorn cattle, I, I'd really want them to understand or know how valuable they are um, in the entire beef industry and their fit. I mean, it does have a long tradition in this country. One of the, the oldest first breeds that established a herd book in the United States and throughout the world. But because of the cattle and the way they behave, their ability to drop valuable replacements and profitable steers in, in one mating, uh, I think it's a resource that as a group, as an industry, we don't tap into enough. My kids and my brother's kids would be the sixth generation to, to help them help out on the farm. My family's been involved in shorthorn cattle for a long time, probably longer than we realize. Uh, we do know that my great grandfather had registered shorthorn bulls in 1902. As we grew and developed, he really selected the cattle that fit our environment and our systems better and, and the shorthorn cattle kind of rose to the top. We're in the Corn Belt and we're you know, pretty flat and we're, we're blessed with, with ample rainfall, but our market isn't close by. Uh, there's not cattle here in the Corn Belt. So our primary product is the sale of commercial bulls and, and most of the people we deal with have commercial cows. And uh, those cattle are from all corners. So we've developed an animal that we can um, transport long distances and and uh, this year, we'll have bulls breeding cows in the state of Washington, down through Southern California, uh, Florida, and up into Canada. Th the main goal of our operation is to use these cattle uh, to not only grow our family and, and sustain our livelihood, but we want them to generate profit for our customers. And we're really cognizant of that fact as we make breeding decisions is, will this make our customer money? The, the traits that shorthorns will offer on the maternal side that you'll see on the ranch for decades to come is the better temperament, the more uh, superior maternal traits, a better foot, sounder genetics that can really go out and forage and move and, and work for you. I enjoy the challenge of making cattle better every generation. I enjoy having my kids and my family, you know, working alongside of them to, to, the, to meet that challenge. We've stayed committed to shorehorn cattle here on our farm for a lot of generations. We appreciate things like the temperament and the docility that they possess, um, their natural ability for those mama cows to get a calf up when it's cold and get it nursing, and cows that work for us instead of us working for them. And as we've matriculated you know, through our family's history, the shorehorn cattle were always able to do those simple jobs the best, and that's why they've remained here for so long. Shorthorn cattle continue to prove their value across the nation. Not only does the breed possess a diverse set of economically important traits, it also offers unmatched disposition. Nowhere is this more apparent than at Kate's Farms in Modoc, Indiana. I am a third generation shorthorn breeder. My grandfather had a multifaceted livestock corn row crop operation, just like a lot of people did back then. Then my dad and my uncle started showing some short horns, and it seemed to be the breed at that time that they had the most luck with. As they got out of college and got done, they came back. That's kind of when it really took off. Back then it was more cow-calf, less show cattle, whereas right now we do a lot more embryo work and IVF work and focus more on the show cattle part. I attribute our success mainly to just we've never been satisfied. We try to make small improvements every year and I always say the day you stop learning is the day you stop getting better. I've always been a question asker because there's always people out there that know things that you don't. I was brought into Shorns. 
It was an easy breed to like. A lot of it's the people. Our industry has a, a family feel. I would say the majority of the farms are much like ours. They're farmers and they raise cattle and they'd spend time with their family. Also, the cattle are easy going. The maternal ability of the cattle is the driving point. They're docile, they're easy to work with, but there's a lot of attributes that made me stick with the shorthorns. We have really focused on utter quality, feet and legs and structural correctness. That has allowed us to always stay somewhat relevant, but also have some longevity to our cows. Things that'll keep you in business for the long haul. One reason to show shorns right now, especially if they have a young kid, are the attitudes on the cattle. As a whole, they are gentle cattle that genuinely like attention and affection from humans. It's a breed that you can get into pretty quick and compete without having to maybe spend quite as much money or have as many years under your belt. The Shoreham Breed is such a family-friendly, junior-driven business. We're sending the right message when we feel like we can send our kids in there and they're gonna get a shot. And I don't know that there's any breed right now where a young kid or a junior has um, more of an equal playing field than they do within the Shoreham Breed. I feel like the American Shore Association definitely has stayed with the times, stayed up with each and every breed, but you just have to have leadership at the top that people can rely on, people can trust, and I feel like our breed has done a good job putting people in place that has helped our breed stay successful. I mean, I feel very fortunate. I'm excited to go to work every day, and a lot of people don't have that luxury. That sometimes you have to have a reality check and just appreciate what God has given you and the opportunities that He's laid before you. After the break, the shorthorn in your herd will help with the hybrid vigor. The calves will be outstanding. It, it's just amazing what you'll do if you add that shorthorn cow. We are a family-oriented breed, but we're a business breed at the same time. They're a great breed for kids to get started with in 4-H in terms of docility, and more importantly, they're a great breed for any commercial producer to have. They're great in the pasture, and they're even better on the plate. See more of why shorthorns are the backbone of America's ranching families. You're watching The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Here are a few facts to consider about shorthorns when you're buying bulls this spring. Shorthorns are the perfect complement to Angus-based cow herds. Shorthorns add longevity to your females, a significant economic advantage. And shorthorns boost heterosis or hybrid vigor without taking your cow herd in the wrong direction. Let's learn more from these breeders. Shorthorns are what made me love the industry. It was kind of the spark that struck the match of passion within me for the livestock industry was the shorthorn breed. To us, the shorthorn breed has meant family. To really, it's uh, what has kept our family close, kept our family active. It, we enjoy working together out here. That close working relationship, that discussion of what we want to accomplish is valuable to me. We try to raise livestock that are low maintenance, real sound on breeding, calving ease, growth, structure. Shorthorns are very adaptable. They seem to do really well in the Midwest, but they do great where we are. They tolerate the heat, they tolerate the cold. Shorthorn cattle are ideal for the beef industry because they cover the whole gamut. They are a versatile breed. They obviously show very well. They're easy fleshing, they marble well, they improve carcass qualities. Truly find the value in the cattle in terms of their maternal ability, their marbling ability, their docility. You know, they're going to lay down half calves, raise calves, produce heavy calves at weaning. If you take them on the commercial side, they're going to have adequate marbling and then also have be very high cut ability kind of cattle, so they're very productive in the feed yard as well. We know they're easy to work with, they're easy going cattle, and people can see that. We want them to come and see. Uh, and interact with the animals as, as we do every day because I think it's a really good selling point for the cattle. Every cow on this place I can walk up to when they're here, scratch them, feed them. They're just, there's nothing wild about a shorthorn cow. 
We are a family-oriented breed, but we're a business breed at the same time. They're a great breed for kids to get started with in 4-H in terms of docility, and more importantly, they're a great breed for any commercial producer to have. Shorns actually marble really well, which a lot of people don't realize. But then on top of that also, the docility uh, really ties into tenderness, and so that allows for a higher quality product that people really appreciate. You know, if you're strictly commercial, you need to be crossbreeding. And, you know, there's a lot of really good Hereford Angus cows. And if you have a Hereford Angus cow, if you breed her back to an Angus bull, you're gonna lose some heterosis. If you breed her back to a Hereford bull, you're gonna lose some heterosis. You breed her back to a shorthorn bull, you're gonna maximize the heterosis on the three breed cross. They're still gonna be all British and you're gonna maintain all those traits that are important to you. The, the shorthorn breed has done such a good job in recent years keeping track of genetics. Dad and I talk about all the time utilizing our purebred genetic gene pool to optimize on heterosis and complementarity. Well, I think the association is very important. They are always looking at new programs to measure these cattle, to put them up against other cattle, to evaluate them. There's no question adding in the feed intake and strengthening the, the carcass data that they have will really help move the shorthorn breed forward. Uh, there's some outstanding people in this breed that work very hard, are very dedicated to improving it, but maintaining its strengths as well. The people within the shorthorn breed are like a family. That's one of the reasons why we are so passionate about the breed, because we're passionate about the people in the breed. You know, we have so many things going on in our lives every day, and when I can enjoy just walking amongst the cattle, knowing that they're providing for our family, that's, that's fun. The most important job we have as ranchers is to take care of the land that we're on and to produce food for the world. And that really is a very important task and we, we see our role as being part of that. We hope you enjoyed this journey across America and seeing all the great things that Shorthorns have to offer. To learn more, visit shorthorn.org. And to learn more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com or connect with us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Pam Minnick for our entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.